it's very encouraging and very enriching to see so many people who are excited about a new and interesting business opportunity. <coughs> to give a very short glimpse of what I used to do and what I do currently, my, I'm qualified as a pharmacist. I studied uh, pharmacy around the time when the dinosaurs were getting out of the world. You know, it's so old now, right? And uh, after that, I started working in a pure pharmaceutical industry. I was making injections for some very big names of the industry. I thought at that point in time, pharmaceuticals or injections and, and those medicines was the be all and end all of things until one day, quite accidentally actually, I was introduced onto this world of natural products. And uh, trust me, that day changed me. And today, I've been in this natural products industry for over 15 years. In spite of, in spite of the various challenges that I have faced through these years, it's been a very, very exciting ride. And all these years, I've had the opportunity to travel across the world. I've been to several countries, met with several customers, and I've had the chance to interact with some of the greatest minds of the industry as well, participated in a lot of clinical trials, and a lot of scientific evaluations, exchange ideas, and let me tell you, you are standing at the threshold of the next big revolution. Oh. Let me give you a simple mathematics. If your product addressed the needs of 10 people, and you had another product which addressed the need of about 100 people, which one would you choose to take up to promote? Pardon me, did I hear 10? 100. And why is that? More money, yeah, and more opportunity, right? Greater opportunity. Now, the sickness industry treats about a billion people. Yeah, and uh, Right from the time when we were small children, we've always been told that if you don't behave well, I'll have the doctor. I know I'm holding you guys back from some great meal, so I'd love this session to be as interactive as possible. So the more conversations we have, the better it's going to be, right? So throw up your conversations. Let's let's have a chat rather than me talking here and boring the heck out of you guys. Is that good? Great. So the sickness industry or the therapeutic industry probably addressed about a billion people at one point in time. How many people would probably go sick? But tell me, how many of you guys want to stay healthy? I still see a couple of hands not going up. You guys? Let's put up the hands and show how many of us guys want to be healthy. Now, which product would you like to sell? A product that makes you continue to be healthy and stay healthy, or go find somebody when somebody is not well, promote a product. <laughs> right, and is, is there going to be a state at which somebody says, you know, I've got all the health I need, I don't need any more health. Will that state ever happen? So, on one side you have a bunch of products which is going to be used only when there is a need for a treatment, and on the other side you have a bunch of products which people are going to need on a day in and day basis, right? And that's where the next big revolution is. 
in the wellness industry. Today, the concept of wellness is becoming overpowering. Have you, you know, how many of you guys love to watch ads and not forward them during the TV? You love to watch ads? Nice, nice. Anybody else? That's it, four guys in this entire crowd love to watch ads. I love to watch ads. Great. Can you tell me there is a slight shift in the way products are being presented today? Yes. yes. What is that? Can somebody tell me what is the general shift that is happening? Pardon me? They are shifting from 10% to 100%. Anybody else? Children? Yeah. What are they trying to say? There is a lot of children in the ads. And uh, what is the most interesting thing that is happening if you see? It, it cuts across whether it is cooking oil, whether it is your car, whether it's your home air conditioner. <laughs> what, can, you, can somebody come up? Tell me what? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Typically, just about everybody Everybody wants to promote their product through a concept of wellness. There is a refrigerator ad which says if you keep use my refrigerator, your food will remain healthy and so you will remain healthy. There's an air conditioner guy who says if you put on my air conditioner, it gives you some silver ions which makes you healthy. Cooking oil is anyway now, everybody is competing each other with healthy. Fruit juices, those days are gone when fruit juices were just sold for taste. Fruit juices are sold today on some component of health. Same old products that used to be there in the market earlier. For example, take the case of uh, the Lipton 3 Roses tea. Nothing changed in Lipton 3 Roses tea since the time we were little boys and having tea in today. But today it contains polyphenols. What, it was not containing polyphenols earlier? Of course it contained the polyphenols earlier. Today the focus is wellness continuing state of good health, right? <laughs> now, then comes down to the most important question, what is then the definition of wellness? What is wellness according to you? Overall well-being. Pardon me? Overall well-being. Overall well-being, okay, that's, that's interesting. Any other definitions of wellness? It's a future. Anything else? Anything else? Wellness is future. Wellness is future. Anything else? Can you give me a definition of it? Now you're giving me the components of wellness. What is the definition of wellness? Maintain what nature has given to us. Maintain what nature has given to us, okay? Physical, mental, and financial well-being. Physical, mental, and financial well-being. Didn't somebody say health is wealth? So if you had health, you will have wealth. Good. Physical, mental and financial well-being then. Let me, uh, can you switch on the, uh, oh. So let's go on to the next slide. There are a couple of interesting definitions of the wellness. The World Health Organization defines wellness as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not just merely the absence of disease. It's not good enough that I have no illnesses, but am I in a position or am I capable of walking up to my neighbor and talking to him and making a pleasant conversation? That is also wellness. So it's not just merely absence of disease, it's also a complete holistic concept. Now that is also the similar definition which the National Wellness Institute, which is constituted a couple of years back, is now trying to promote this concept of wellness. Now why is this relevant to us? At one point in time, people thought, if you took a vaccine, you're good, your immunity is great. Or if you went to the doctor and did your checkup four months, you're good. But the neighbor can't stand you, you can't make a conversation. You're no longer happy, you're not enjoying your vacations and happiness. Prasanna Atma Indriya Manaha Swastha Idhya Bhikiyate. 
It defines the word swastya. Familiar with the word swastya? Yeah. It says the word swastya or the state of swastya is defined by the samadosha, the various doshas in our body. Now, I don't mean the bad ones, good ones. The humors, the vata, pitta, and kapha, which are the functional entities of the body, when they are in equilibrium, and the various fires in the body, what are these fires? Chili bhaji? Is that the fire you're talking about? Chili bhaji fires? No. These are fires that are within the body which help you transform things. The energy is within the body. When they are in balance, and the input output is also in balance. What you eat, you absorb what is good for you and you have thrown away what is bad out of your body. When that equation is in balance, and most important, he says, prasanna atma indriya manaha. The soul senses and the mind. When all this come together, that state is called swastya. Now, is this a simple English translation of that? It took us 10,000 years to understand. It, it took a long time to translate this. Now, having said this, so what do I start doing? I start laughing, I start jumping around, I start eating raw foods every day. Does that make me healthy and wealthy? It's a complete integrated process. Wellness does not come by just doing... Sir, what do you do for wellness? What is that that you do for wellness? Can somebody tell me, to, in your own opinion, what do you do for wellness? Somebody, the guy in third in the first row. Third person in the first row. Yeah, yes, yes sir. What do you do for wellness? To, to, to be healthy every day, what do you do? You do yoga, fantastic. Anybody else does anything other than yoga for wellness? I drink pots. Pardon me? I pulse. <laughs> How many of you guys take eye pulse for wellness? You have so many people to cover. <laughs> yes, anybody else? Please, thank you. Thanks, much. Anybody else does anything else for wellness? Proper diet. Proper diet? Okay, and somebody else? Proper diet? Exercise. Physical exercise. Pardon me? Sorry? I, I didn't quite hear. That's it? Adequate sleep. Adequate sleep. Somebody sits and meditates. Does anybody do meditation? Yes, please. Yes. I do mental relaxation. You do meditation. Anybody else? Meet, meet good people, good friends, have a good laugh, have a great meal. Does anybody do that? Right. So, all these put together form wellness. And therefore, as you saw, this therefore is a very, very large industry. Now let's go look at what this industry can do to you. Go on to the next slide, please. There are seven dimensions of wellness. Can anybody figure out what those icons they're living in? Nor must you take pollution from the environment that you're in. Social wellness. Then that is relationship wellness. You know, are we in a position to maintain a good relationship with our friends, with our family, with our neighbors, with the country as a whole? That is important as well. And then you have the mind. Whatever you take, you, you can take up. I want to, I, I go around to the church, I go around to the temple, I go around sit and pray. Whatever makes you connect to the larger cosmic being. That wellness, and find a spiritual wellness. And the last one, of course, is physical wellness. Now, unless we have all these seven components put together, we are not attaining wholesome wellness. And each one of this has spawned an industry. Each one of this. All these, by itself, are industries in itself. And together, you have 
a component of wellness which is breathe it, live it, and love it. You be there at every point. Next one, please. Now, if that be the case, let's talk to your numbers. What is the size of this industry? Can somebody tell me what's the size of the industry? Don't read there. <laughs> yeah. It's the next trillion dollar industry. We moved through several trillion dollar ideas. The next trillion dollar industry is the wellness industry. And today we are exactly sitting squarely on the wave that is riding onto the trillion dollar industry. But what does this trillion dollar industry constitute? What does this constitute? Let's go on to the next one. Next one. This is what the industry constitutes. I don't know if you can read everything from there. The top one, the most popular one, beauty and anti-aging. Everybody wants to stay 20. Nobody wants to grow up. And that is the most profitable industry. Tell me one guy who says, I'm okay looking old. There's a little bit of wrinkles, I'm fine. Nobody says that, and therefore there is opportunity in that. Or the anti-aging industry. Today, the conditions of living have improved. We have better buses, we have better cars, we have better phones, we have better connectivity. We have better ways to travel. So we want to live that extra life. We want to live that extra day and live it healthy. And therefore, we want to live young. We want to be able to be, taste new things, new foods, new places to go visit. And we want to look good. So the beauty and wellness industry takes the top. Then we have the fitness, mind and body exercises. How many, you know, in your own locality, between over the last 10 years, how many new gyms have come? How many new spas have come? There is, there is, there is a, always an Ayurvedic therapy center which is spawning like every day morning. What they do? They give you a nice oil bath. New gyms. And people are signing up. It was, it was, it used to be a, a, a very niche fad once upon a time. But today that's not the case. There are programs, there are customer acquisitions programs that these gyms and, uh, you know, Places have come through every uh, every apartment now. The first thing they say is there's a gym there. Gym. Am I correct? Yes. So that's the next interesting classification. The third one, and which is going to be the third and fourth, are the ones that's of relevance to us. What are those? We're talking in terms of healthy eating, nutrition, and weight loss. Healthy eating. Today, look at biscuits. Very quietly, you don't make any difference. You know, none of those high sugar biscuits are even being advertised blatantly. It's all about, it contains high fiber, it's good for you, it's non-diabetic, non-diabetic versions, sweetless versions, sugar-free versions, and so on. So there has to be a health benefit. That is the most interesting category that is coming up. And most interesting is preventive healthcare. How many times did any of you go to the doctor when you were perfectly healthy? How many? Nobody, right? But today there is a new industry coming in. There are doctors and if we walk into hospitals, it's an interesting trend which you're seeing. Imagine you've gone with some member of your family who has broken his finger and you're waiting for the cast to be done. Suddenly at the reception, you find a counter where they now talk to people who have come along with the other guys and said, sir, can I interest you in a new preventive medicine package? Which includes, of course, they will do your master health checkup routinely. Yeah? They're suggesting vitamins, they're suggesting healthy ways of living. Preventive med even the, what do you call, customary uh, therapeutic institutions like hospitals and clinics have started coming up and talking to people in terms of how you can prevent a disease rather than running around to cure it after you have had the problem. Which is where squarely we are. We are in the preventive industry. And so where do you get this information from then? Where will I get ideas about prevention from? Anybody? 
Where can I look for it? I want to know what I should do to prevent diseases. Where should I look? Look to your mother. Look to your grandma. Seriously. Over the years, our tradition has incorporated health tips into our own food. It was once said, let food be thy medicine. Food is the medicine. And the wrong kind of food at the wrong time can be poison as well. So when uh, there's a little, I'm sure all of us have had at least one experience when we were at home when we were small children. One day we came up and said, Mom, my stomach is aching. She changed the menu that day. She made, either she didn't make a spicy sambar or something, she made a light dal. What did she do? She removed irritant spices from there, she gave you bland food, let the body adjust itself. Now where did this come from? If you ask her, why did you do this? She'll say, my mom told me that. And so on and so forth. So this tradition has come down from the primary source. And what is the primary source? Ayurveda. Ayurveda is the primary source and if you break down and translate the word Ayurveda, what do you get? What is Ayu? Ayu is life. What, is, what does Veda mean? Life sciences? Ayurveda is life sciences. The science of life. The science of life, it is not science of treatment, science of... Uh, drugs or anything, it's, it's science of life. And therefore it teaches you how to live. What should you do to live a fulfilling, promising life? So it is not about herbs, extractions, it tells you how to take a bath, when to take a bath, what kind of water must you take a bath in, how hot must it be, how cold must it be, how should you eat the food? When should you eat the food? How much of food must be eaten? Can you tell me how much of food is to be eaten? Can anybody answer this question? Half stomach. Anybody else? Pardon me? 80%? Anybody else? Pardon me? It says food must be taken in one third. Solid one third one third of liquids and a third of it kept vacant so that there is space for the food to digest and there must be time the right food at the right time in the right quantity is health change any one of these it's disease right so these are some of the concepts which we have been inculcated in our own lives, in our own living, and then we are actually practicing it without even knowing it. And therefore, it is not necessary for us to keep popping pills on a day-on-day -day basis. If I told you, you know, for you to remain healthy, make sure that you take three of these capsules in the morning, four in the afternoon, about seven at night. Probably in the first week, all of you are rah, 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 I will do that. Two weeks later, you know, you missed it off. So what's the best way then to do things? Can I incorporate health and wellness and prevention into some things which I will have on a day on day basis? What is one thing that you will not miss in a day as you wake up? Coffee? Coffee? Good. And sometime around noon, a nice drink. Now instead of me saying, take this capsule, and make sure you have it every third day morning or every morning at 9 o'clock and 1 at 12 o'clock. If I can add the goodness of health in something that we do every single day, have we established an insurance? Yes? Right? And therefore, look at what we are talking about today. What are we talking about today? What are the two things we're going to talk about today? What, what are the two products of Indus Viva? Can, can somebody talk? Eye pulse and eye coffee. 
integral part of our daily lives. Every sip of it, as you, you're not going to miss your coffee. Why are we having these food? Let's go to the next slide, please. The next one, please. Yeah, of course. We spoke about this. This is the next trillion dollar industry. Let's go down to the next. There are three components to great health. Physical, emotional, and nutritional. So what you consume has to have the three parts to it. It's got to be something that provides not only the, the food necessary, but it must also provide an emotional balance. Why do you drink coffee? It gives you that energy, but it's also a ritual. There is, there is an appreciation of that flavors, the taste, and the whole ritual of doing it in the morning. There's an emotional connect. And to that, we're adding the third component, which is nutrition. If we can bring in a concept which can be added along, which can ride along with the emotional sensitiveness and the physical contribution of what coffee can do, a great thing, and everybody has a cup of coffee in the morning, can we then make sure that every sip of coffee that we take has health imbibed in it? And that is where I have a colleague of mine, Dr. Shubhrata Ray. He is a phytochemist. This guy works with plants and medicinal herbs. Figures of Sir uh, Dr. Ray. Give a good hand. Thank you. He is going to come up, he is in fact at the verge of several interesting researches which will come up with a whole range of new products. But all these will be delivered in exactly the same fashion. It will have a component that integrates with our daily days, our daily requirement, what we normally do on a day-on-day -day basis. So, Let's evaluate whatever we eat from here on. Does it have these three components? And if it does not have these three components, you're not getting the central one. Right? Is that, you, you got it? Yes. Right? So let's then go down to see what we are next. What do we have? Can somebody tell me, does it have all the three? Yes, yes sir. Who, who can talk? Yeah, that, yeah, man in a nice red tie. Yes, please. What, what, what are the, how is it containing all the three components? How does it contain the three components? Let's talk about the three components. You talk about one component. What is the physical contribution in this? Pardon me? It's in the form of a liquid, it's, it's in the form of a nice drink. Anybody wants to come up with an emotional concept which is there in iPulse? It's, 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 it's got what? Tasty. It's got a great taste? Yes. It's got a nice aroma? Is, is that something which is nice? So, does it, thank you sir, thanks. Does it take care of the second concept of emotional contribution to the product? What's the third? What is that now? What does iPulse contain that is nutritional? It contains fruits, yes, that's the physical quality. Pardon me? Antioxidants. Anybody here doesn't know about antioxidants? All of you know. Somebody wanted to raise their hand. Sir, everybody is clear about what is an antioxidant and what it can do to help. Am I correct? Great. So, here again, we have a product which contains the three imperatives, physical, emotional, and nutritional. And therefore, what does it provide? It provides health. And it provides health in an industry which is what? 
Pardon me? It's a wellness industry, and where is the wellness industry headed today? One trillion dollars. So do you want to be part of this journey? Yes. How aggressively do you want to be part of this journey? Do you want to be aggressively part of this journey? Yes! Fantastic. <laughs> now let's, you know, I, I put up those slides just in case there is any questions. Let's quickly run through and go to the next product. So we know about free radicals, we know how they work, we know how the heart health is a great thing and how it compares with other products. I heard that uh, you guys have been discussing this in great depth. Now let's go here. Does this satisfy the same three conditions? Yes. Yes. Let's give it a good hand. I thought this was a brilliant product. Now can somebody come down and tell me which is the first component here, the physical component? The coffee. The ritual of having the coffee in the morning, that in the liquid form it contributes the getting up in the morning, I am having my hot cup of coffee thought. And what is the emotional connect in this? Yes, sir. Pardon me? The, the smell, aroma and the taste contribute, the emotional contribution to it. And what's the third? Nutrition. Sir, thank you. Thanks much. What contributes nutrition in this? Salsitol. Anybody knows what is salsitol? Salicia extract. It contains another interesting ingredient. Has anybody thought about it as well? Fenugreek. What is fenugreek? Has anybody tasted fenugreek in their lives? Yes. Where? At home. As what? Italy. What is fenugreek known as? Commonly. Methi, mentia. Methi or mentia or vende. Right? Mendium, methi, mentia, mendem, urua. See, it's, it's pretty famous, it's an, it's an interesting ingredient. Now, anybody knows what it's good for, apart from providing great taste? It actually is pretty bitter. Have you tried the chewing uh, methi? It's pretty bitter, right? What is the bitter thing? Anybody knows? Doc, can you tell them what is the bitter principle in methi? In fenugreek. This are the sterones. <coughs> Pardon me? Not fennel, methi. Fenugreekum. <laughs> it will come. So, this is something that, and it is also considered great for the amount of fibers it contains, the supplements it contains and some great ingredients. That is why it is incorporated again, like somebody said, it is found in your idli. We add it typically in sambar and in our parathas and so on and so forth. So as many times as possible, we have tried to incorporate this ingredient because of its greatness. Can you tell me what is the other beautiful ingredient which is there in the coffee? Therocarpus. What is therocarpus? Pardon me? Indian What is it in Malayalam? Venga. Venga Thod. Venga Kavan. Okay. Do you know what Venga or Therocarpus is good for? For back pain. For back pain? And? Pressure. Good for pressure, yes. Blood purification. Anybody else? Anybody else from this side? They have scored one point. Can anybody score one more here? I haven't heard a single lady take get up and talk. You should. Par pardon me? Stress free, okay. It is a great anti-diabetic. It contains an ingredient called sterostilbene, which has tremendous anti-diabetic properties. 
In fact, there was a time when people used a wooden glass, which, which is hollowed from inside. They will pour water into that tumbler and leave it overnight, and the next day, they would drink that water. Are, are you familiar with this? This used to happen about 20, 25 years back. For Madhu Meha or Prameha. So, anything else? Any other interesting ingredient in this? Eye coffee? White kidney bean. What is white kidney bean doing? Pardon me? Rem helps break down the carbohydrates. What else is the other ingredient which is great in this? Coffee bean, green coffee bean extract. What does it contain? Chlorogenic acids. Did somebody speak about that? Green coffee bean extract is a great antioxidant as well. And especially in a metabolic disorder like diabetes, you need that antioxidant activity. Why is everybody missing out the most ingredient in that? Interesting ingredient. Caffeine. People have missed that. Coffee. That again enhances your metabolism as well. So it is actually the best union possible. Coffee by itself, you know, when, you, when you're feeling low and tired, you drink a cup of coffee, you're actually feeling perked up. What is actually happening? It is raising your metabolism. So it actually by putting coffee along with silacea, along with fenugreek, along with green coffee extract, along with kidney bean, what you are trying to do, you're enhancing the metabolism of the body to make sure that it utilizes energy properly. And therefore, the best composition possible, like what you have in the case of eye pulse. What is the operative word? I like that word which they have used. Synergy. What is synergy? One plus one is what? One plus one is 11? How many marks do you have in your mathematics? Mathematics <laughs> 2. 1 plus 1 is 11 is synergy. 1 plus 1 is 2. It's just additive effect. Synergy is when the result is far more than the components of what adds on. Now, eye coffee and eye pulse are perfect examples of synergistic combination of ingredients that give more value than individually. And therefore, if there are any questions, I'd like to be more than happy to answer. But otherwise, I thought I wanted to share with you my excitement with this industry, the natural product industry, with the vastness and richness of what it can provide, and what lovely products we have which can deliver beyond physical and emotional value a nutritional value as well which truly contributes towards health and wellness right so if that's a deal then let's all give ourselves a great hand congratulating ourselves on a good decision made yeah? Thank you, gentlemen.